Well, good morning. You guys doing good? Awesome, awesome. Hey, can we make, uh, make some noise for those who are joining us uh, live stream? Can we do that? Hey, guys. Glad you're joining us as well. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. This morning's going to be a little different. We are going to talk about baptism, but also we're going to continue our conversation about uh, this idea of fear and beauty. Because I, I want to convince you that it's, uh, that it's the beautiful community that you can belong to. Because if you do belong to a beautiful community, community, it can give you the power to overcome the most fearful things in your life. That's kind of the premise of this series, that it's really beauty that is the solution to fear. It's the beautiful moments, the beautiful people, the beautiful hope and dreams that we have that actually comes and overcomes our fears and our worries and anxieties, anxieties and sets us free to actually do the things we are called to do. And baptism is all about that, all about that. Now, I want to tell you a story. I've told this a couple of times, but I think this is like, it, it really illustrates uh, this, this point right here. Let me ask you this, though. Have you ever, like, um, um, actually, in your life, do you, have, do you have your people? Do you have your people? Right? Do you, have you ever like, oh, those are my people? Did you have that experience this morning? You're like, that's my people. You're like, these are all my people, but, not, but those, those are really my people. Right? Have you ever wanted to be... Those people, like, want to be a part of a people, but you're not really a part of a people. You're like, they're their people, but I want to be their people. You know what I'm talking about? Like, so or when I first started uh, going to church, uh, Christian churches, I, I came to know Jesus, and then I started coming to church and go to different churches. And some I would go to like, charismatic churches, or b basically they're vo pretty vocal in the middle of a service. So, so it was, you know, it was common for a pastor to get up and just kind of point someone out and say something to them. And so I would all, I'd somehow show up to these churches, and then somehow I would always be standing up in the service. I just kind of knew, I'm that guy, I'm going to stand. And I would get this thing, uh, uh, it was consistent. They asked me to stand there, sir, would you stand? I'm like, me? Really? Me? The only one who doesn't look like this? Like, anybody else? Yes? Okay. And then they'd say, you're going to go and reach your people. And I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to go, I don't want to, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Like, my people will kill me. I want to stay here. Like, why can't I be your people? Like, let's just be people. I'm your people? Sort of, Right? Right? There's this insatiable desire for a human soul to belong. It's, in fact, the greatest gift you could give someone is let them belong to part of your family, a part of your group, just a sense of belonging, and we crave that. And that's why the sense of belonging, a sense of community, in fact, gives us the power to overcome the most fearful things in our life. And the reason why baptism is so important and how it's so connected is that, in fact, baptism is an illustration of what it means to belong to a community. Now, the word, um, the word Baptist or the uh, baptism is actually a Greek word. It means to s uh, clean or submerge. It's the, uh, it's the word baptisma. The, there are different uh, words for it, but what's interesting in different cultures and different parts of time in history, human history, people use water to do a particular thing and especially to clean. So, if, for example... I grew up in the Muslim faith. I mean, Muslim faith, they have this thing called al-wadu. Can you say al-wadu? Al-wadu. Okay, so that is something, a cleansing, a, a, like a water cleansing you have to do every time um, you pray. So before everything, every prayer, you got to do this cleansing. The Jewish people actually had this thing called the, uh, the, the mik, mit, mitzah. Can you say mitzah? They had this cleansing that... Again, the same situation, there was a pool of water. And if we were a certain age, there was either a rite of passage or a certain cleansing, and you would go in and get dipped into the pool. And so when we think of baptism, we have our own ideas. We got it from the Jewish people. Jesus changed it. In fact, John started baptizing people first. You remember that? John was baptizing people all day long. In fact, who's the guy who baptized Jesus? John. John's the guy. But John was doing a different kind of, bap uh, of baptism. In, 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 in fact, it it, it, they, the rabbis were like, what are you really doing? He was baptizing people in, 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 uh, to, to, to remove their sins. And then John would say, but there's a guy who's coming 
and he's going to baptize you with fire or he's baptized you with his spirit. Basically, John said that your view of baptism in terms of what it means to be cleansed is going to forever be changed. What's interesting, though, is that in a Christian church, like most Christian churches, when you think of getting baptized, it, it's portrayed as a cleansing. But in fact, it's a belonging. It's, 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 it's really changed. In fact, if you want to just uh, go to the moment Jesus got baptized, this illustrates it so well. So Jesus gets baptized, right? He goes to John, and here's what it says. Uh, let's see. It's in Matthew 3. And it says, when Jesus went to Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John tried to talk him out of it, right? He said, I'm, not, I'm, I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you. Uh, and so why are you coming to me? So basically John's like, dude, no way, man. And Jesus goes like, Yahweh, man. <laughs> oh, you see what I did there? Yes. I have arrived. Now, those of you who are like, Yahweh, what are you talking about? Don't worry about it. It's a cheesy joke. Anyway, so, so, so basically, John baptizes, finally, John, he baptizes Jesus. Jesus comes out of the water. Here, let's read on. It says this. It says, so, but Jesus said, before he was uh, still arguing with him, Jesus said this. It should be done. We must carry out what God requires. Now, is he saying, does God require you to be cleansed and cleaned before you come to him? Or is he portraying or illustrating something deeper? That's the big question. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came out of the water, he was so clean. Okay, no. So, he came out of the water, the heavens were opened. The heavens were opened. Could it apply to what we experience now? Or was it just that account? And then he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, settling on him. Could that be the promise of the Spirit of God living inside of us? Or is this just him just talking about, I think, there's a, I think that's a dove, I don't know. And then a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Again, could this be just... God just wanting to say something, remind someone. If, if people did not know who Jesus was, in that moment, God opens up heaven and tells everyone there, hey, 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 listen up. This guy right here, he is my son. He is my son. And by the way, I love him. I love him. Don't you love it like when you're, if you're a teenager or when you were growing up, like your dad and mom would show affection in, front, in, front of public, in, in public? I love you. Stop it. <laughs> Don't tell people. I love you too. But anyways, let's do, it, uh, let's do it at home. Let's not make a public announcement. You know what I'm saying? No, let's not open up heaven and tell the world. I'm, saying, I'm sure Jesus is like, okay, I get a dad. He's like, I love you. You're my son. You're my dearly loved son. In some passages it says, you bring me great joy. You make me happy. So could you imagine though, could you imagine what the people were thinking and what was really going on? Or could it be something bigger was going on? Here is God saying, here's what's going to happen. I am fundamentally changing what baptism means. It is not you cleaning yourself up and adapting to me, and you come and present yourself to me. Baptism is now an adoption. You become my kids. You are my son. You are my dearly loved daughter. You bring me great joy. All other religions ask you to ad adapt, to change, to do certain things, to fit in, to figure it out. Do your part and then you'll be accepted. Here, baptism says, this is gonna, what's going to happen. Jesus is coming out. The first thing he hears is, I love you. And I am so proud of you. Now, we don't understand this, right? Because we make people proud. Like, you, have you heard your parents say, hey, make us proud? Because right now, it's not cutting it. 
Make us proud. Do it. We high five each other after something great. Jesus had at this point not done anything. Did you know that? He had not even gone to get uh, uh, tempted. Remember the temptation? That happened after this. What had Jesus done? Jack. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Like I'm sure Jesus was like, hey, later, let's high five later. I'm about to do some amazing stuff. <laughs> then, then open up heaven. You know what I'm saying? Open up heaven when I show up after the crucifixion. Hey, hey, hey. You know, do, like, do something like that. I'm not even doing anything important. In fact, I would even baptize myself. John did it. And he goes, hey, hey, stop. I just want you to know, this signifies you belong to me. See, baptism is actually God saying, will you belong to me? Will you come join a community, a beautiful community? Will you be my son? Will you be my daughter? That is what baptism truly means. If you read the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 12 says this. For we were all, all baptized by one spirit. So as to form one, what? One body, one community, one faith. We were all baptized to signify that we have become one people. Whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much you, you think you need to clean up. This is about not you trying to figure out everything you need to do to fit in. This is you going and experiencing something that I'm just going to give to you. And that is you, my friend, you, my daughter, you, my son, you just belong. There is a big difference about fitting in and belonging. Like you, you've experienced this. In groups, you've gone in, you go, hey, okay. And they go, hey, you fit with us. You fit with us. You're like us, right? Like Star Wars fans. I don't even get them. <laughs> don't, yes. I mean, I want to be my, I want you to be my people, but you're not my people. I don't know, whatever. But, <laughs> you know, um, but there are certain groups, and you know this, that you, you know, you have to fit in. You walked into churches and you go, okay, I know what I have to do to fit in. You've walked into environments like that. But then you've walked into environments that are opposite. And somehow they just say, hey, you don't have to change who you are. We just love you. We accept you. You belong. You become family. You see, when you accept and, and allow people to belong... Then you give them the t power to actually become something they were created to be. Instead of telling them, hey, you need to clean up your act. You need to cleanse yourself and then you fit in. And as long as you do what we do, you fit. And right here in the baptism of Jesus, God is saying, I'm opening up heaven. I am sending my spirit and I am adopting you once and for all. You just have to say yes. You just have to be willing to get baptized. And I don't know how, what you experience being uh, when in your baptism, but a baptism, this idea of being immersed into uh, water, signifying there is a death of the old and the beginning of a new, that is profound, especially when you understand the meaning of it and especially when you connect it to a community. Because a powerful community you are immersed in and submerged in, in one sense, changes you forever. You can be actually a part of, a part of a community and it not change you. But when you are submersed in, when you are baptized into this community, uh, to a community, it forever changes you. Last week, I was uh, having lunch with an Egyptian friend of mine. He texted me from Egypt. He was like, hey, what do you want? And I was like, hey, dude, I want that Fez hat. I was like, what? He was like, Fez hat, that's what I want. So he got me a Fez hat. He got me two. And I put it on Instagram. We were both at, at Burkdale up here and had these on. It was hilarious, by the way. So he put these on, this Fez hat. It was It was awesome. It's awesome. So apparently the tassels, the, the more the royalty, you're, 
you're more royalty if it's longer. And you're, you look ridiculous too. But, but anyways, so this is a Fez hat. So um, he, he was at, he, when we were talking about uh, just our cultures and all that, he asked me like uh, one of those questions that I think maybe just immigrants ask each other. And he was like, hey, man, by the way, where's your accent? I was like, what? He was like, man, where's your accent? Where did it go? Did you leave it? Like what, what happened to it? And, you know, he wasn't born here. I wasn't born here. And he was like, I, he said, I've listened to you. I watched you, man, all that. And I have an accent, and he does. He has an amazing, thick Arab accent with speaking English is hilarious. Because there is no P sound. There's no P sound in the Arab language. So if you say, hey, you want to go to a party, he says, hey, I want to go to a party. And a, a party is, I don't know what that is, but it's, not, it's different. I don't know what that is. So we're talking. And then he says, yeah, what did you do? What did you do to get rid of it? And I was like, I don't know. And then as I started thinking about it that day, I know what I did. I immersed myself in a, in a different culture. I moved out of my culture and went into a different culture and was changed by it. So you see this all over in different parts of the world. There are pockets of people who stay in their community and they develop subcultures and they never change. They never change. But once you are taken out, you could be actually a part of a bigger country, but live in a sub-community, a subculture, and just keep that and never be changed by it. Or you can be submerged and immerse yourself, immerse yourself into a culture, and it totally changes you. Some of you are not having the power to fight away your anxiety, your fear, your depression depression, your despair, your, your faithlessness, your hopelessness is because I believe you've never really immersed yourself in the community of Jesus. And it's hard. I get it. I get it. Because the community of Jesus sometimes, it's all about, hey, you can fit in if you would do X, Y, Z. But I'm hoping that Mosaic is a picture of, if, hey, you can actually just belong before you ever believe. You can just be a part of us. You look different, that's great. You act different, that's wonderful. You can just, you don't have to change who you are to be with us. You can just be with us. And that's the kind of faith, that's the kind of beautiful invitation that even God says, hey, 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 let me just tell you, I love you before you do anything else. I want to show you a story of a person who, who had a lot of doubt and uh, a lot of, uh, in, um, of concern when it came to the community of, 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 that he grew up in. But then it actually affected his life as well. But then he, then he had an experience that I think is really worth sharing. So let's, let's watch this. I grew up in a Methodist home. Uh, church was everything. I went to church on Sunday with my grandmother. Uh, then we went right back on Wednesday. And we would either go on a Friday or Saturday night for another church event. Church was everything in our household praying before we eat, uh, praying before we go to sleep. Growing up, I believed that my love of God was directly connected uh, with how much time I actually spent in church. Uh, that was a big, big deal for me as I grew up. So at 16, I really started to examine the church and what I was doing in the church and why I was there. And I started to notice things that were occurring outside of church that just weren't matching up with what the church stood for, what the church was about. Uh, when I was with uh, those that are in the church on the outside, I would hear them speaking negatively about women, uh, the drinking, alcohol, and sometimes drugs. And I said, that's, if that's what goes on in the church, I don't want any part of it. Uh, I started doubting my faith. Uh, and I, I left the church. So I joined the military, and then I met Dominique, my girlfriend at the time, now my beautiful wife. And next thing you know, a, a decade passes, and I have a child. I, I think so many good and wonderful things were happening to me that I felt that, you know, okay, I, could, I think I can actually do it without him. I think, I'm, I think I'm good. I felt like my footsteps were being guided in a certain direction. I've always felt that, no, no doubt about it, even when I wasn't attending church. And then one day, Dominique comes to me and says, you might want to try Mosaic. It's just a little different. Uh, 
different people there, completely different than what you've known in the past. Uh, and so one day I came to Mosaic. There were 15 people in the parking lot just smiling at me, and every single person was different. Uh, whether it was a male or female, different races, different uh, socioeconomic backgrounds, it, everyone was different, and I love that. The main reason why I came back the second time is because I really didn't feel any pressure. And I never felt that before in a church where there was not a pressure to perform, some way, somehow. Uh, but when I came, everyone was just wonderful. They just talked to me and asked me how I was doing it, and they genuinely m meant what they were asking. That was just incredible. That's what allowed me to become so at peace and for me to start my journey in the church because, okay, I know I don't have to believe something right now. So that made, that gave me uh, a little more peace and I was a little more comfortable actually reaching out and asking questions that I never would have asked before. So last December, the week of Christmas, I called Naeem and I told him that I wanted to be baptized. And uh, he said, slow down, <laughs> let's meet, and let's uh, have a conversation. So the next day we had coffee and we sat and talked for about two hours. And we discussed the transition in, the relationship, in my relationship with Jesus. And uh, I was able to tell him just how important it was that the community of Mosaic, how open they were, uh, how accepting that they were of me, someone who was broken, someone who didn't believe, when I first came back to the church, uh, how they allowed me to transition and grow in, in my faith. And uh, after the conversation, we, we decided that, uh, yeah, we should, I should go ahead and get baptized. <laughs> uh, as we walked out, Naeem, he <laughs> said to me, uh, all right, Brian, let's go. We're going to meet Jesus now. <laughs> And we walked out to what I felt was forever, like the middle of the lake. It felt like we were walking for days. It was so cold. And then as we began to pray, my heart raced so fast. It was just incredible. And then as I went under, my heart began to race even faster. And then as soon as I came back up, it was just a peace. I felt clarity. It was something I never felt before and completely lost in the moment. I didn't feel the cold anymore. I didn't feel anything. I just, I just felt peace. And that was all that I could have ever asked for because once I came back up and since I've come back up from that day, so many things have changed. And that was just so beautiful to have at the beginning, just that peace. I know that this, the trials and the tribulations that I went through led me to the doors of Mosaic. And I know it led me to the seats. And then it led me to the position to where I could have that peace and that clarity. It's going to be hard. It's going to be rough. But finding that peace in God is, is everything. It's what solidifies everything and makes the journey so, so much worth it. I'm so extremely thankful for the beautiful group of people here at Mosaic um, that allowed me to belong before I believed. They allowed me to conquer my struggles and my fears to help me find my faith in Jesus. Wow. Give, yeah, definitely. Let's, uh, let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. Definitely. Hey, will you stand with me? Let's stand together as we close uh, this morning. We have um, we have people already signed up to get baptized, but every Sunday uh, when we have baptism Sunday, we have people that walked in never thinking that they were going to get baptized, but then they end up getting baptized. And so we are prepared for you. Uh, we've got uh, everything you'll need: shorts, shirt, flip flops. We've got hair dryers for the guys. We got we got it all. We got it all. But we, we, are, we are always prepared weekends like this. So maybe is, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Could it be that God is saying, hey, 
you need to do this. You need to, for once and for all, you need to move past your past. You need to join a community, be recognized as one. You need to stop pretending and hoping to fit in. You need to be adopted into the community of faith. And I, I tell you this, it's, 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 the, it's the beautiful communities that we're a part of that allow us to push away the doubt and the fears in our life. It's the people around us that do that. So let me pray for us and pray for you. Lord God, thank you so much for those of us who are here are going to get baptized. We already know it. God, I thank you for what you're going to do. For what you're going to do. God, for those people who are actually watching via live stream and they're wondering, what, what do I do? What, what do I do? I pray right now that if they can get to one of our services or if they can talk to a pastor, God, that you would speak to them now and that this this. This season, Lord God, they would take the step and they would ask someone to baptize them. God, for those of us who are here this morning and we feel like we need to, but we're scared to do it, God, I pray, God, that this beautiful community will give them the power to push past the fear and to get baptized. If you are one of those people who are going to get baptized, um, after I get done praying, I want you to walk out that door to, to your left my right. God, we thank you so much for what you're doing. God, as people leave, even right now, when they leave to get changed, and we stay here, the rest of us, we extend our faith. We extend our faith, God, and we want to say, God, we want all that you have for them. God, as people are walking out, as people are wondering if they should, Lord God, I thank you that you are reminding them of the invitation that you've given us, Lord, all to be adopted by you, to belong, and to have a power, to have a presence, Lord God. For some of us, we've never heard, God, that you call us your sons and daughters and that you are proud of us. God, all our lives, we've felt like we have to prove that we are worth your love. So this morning, God, as we get baptized, we're saying yes to being adopted by you. God, we love you. We thank you, God. As we worship, Lord God, speak to us. Give, give, a, a, give a peace, Lord God, to the people who are getting baptized. God, the next couple of minutes, Lord, are going to be powerful. We just pray your presence. God, lead us as we sing, Lord God. Be here, inhabit, inhabit this place, Lord God.